Hello and welcome to Elizabeth's Craft Room. Today we're going to use a hostess set. Now what's a hostess set? If you host a party, now this can be a real life party with guests coming along, or this can be an online party, or this could be just you putting an order in at a hostess level, you can choose this stamp set of, as one of your choices. You can't get this unless you are a hostess. So if you want to learn more about how you can do that and how easy it is and how much fun, you can get in touch with me at Elizabeth's Craft Room. Now these are the stamps that are in this set and they are so much fun. Um, I've been using these quite a lot but I can see lots of um, of use for these. Look, you're a cut above the rest and the scissors. What a great card for your hairdresser. I love that idea. So I'm just going to um, show you a particular card and then I'm going to give you some more ideas of what you can do with this stamp set. So this is the one that we're going to make today. Um, I saw this idea online of doing it like a sampler um, and I just really, really liked that. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. So I'm starting with some Memento ink. Let's put a piece of scrap paper down here. And I'm going to use the little cross stitch ones. And I am not measuring or worrying too much about this. Believe me, if I was sewing, it wouldn't be this neat. So I'm not at all worried about the fact that it might not be completely straight or completely measured. It's just to give the impression of a sampler. So that would be a lot quicker than I could cross stitch. And a lot neater than I could cross stitch as well. Let me show that close to the camera so you can see. Oh, they're cute. Okay, so now I'm going to build up my um, my little uh, sampler here. I'm going to start in this corner with some sequins. So we have sequin stamps. Um, I did this one in the blue, but I'm going to be doing this with Rich Razzleberry, Old Olive, and Melon Mambo. Um, and sticking inside the um, the colour families makes it really, really easy to know that your colours are going to go together. I'm absolutely guaranteed that these will go together. And look how detailed that is. Isn't that lovely? With those sequins. And then just to add a little bit more bling, why not put some real sequins on as well? So this is the... Um, Blushing Bride sequin trim. And I'm just going to pull a few of those off. I've got some in a pot here as well because um, we do them in different colours. So I'm going to take a couple of the gold ones too because you can never have too much bling. And my favourite way of sticking sequins is with the fine tip glue pen. You can do it with uh, Tombow but I much prefer the fine tip glue and what I'm going to do is just dot some glue, little tiny dots on there and then just pick up the sequins and drop them onto those glue dots and by the time I've finished stamping the rest of this card those glue dots will be dry and those sequins won't be going anywhere. One more. Oh, and I've just seen, look, you see, just when you think you've done it all, I've just missed a glue dot. There we go. There we go. And then just put the, um, the pin back in and that'll be ready for next time. Okay, so I've done my little sequin panel. So the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I love you so. And I'm going to do that in the Rich Razzleberry. Now the other greetings that are in here are great. Um, one of them says, crafters don't lie, they embellish. I like that one. And um, the other crafting one is, thanks a hole punch. I like that. 
Uh, we've also got Let's Paint the Town, You're a Cut Above the Rest. Um, yeah, that's all of them. So we've got I Love You So for that one. Then we've got to have those little scissors and they are going to be in memento again. And these are the paper snips. So if you've got the stamping up paper snips, you will recognise that. That is our paper snips. Now for the, um, the cotton reel, which I'm going to put down in this bottom corner, I'm going to use markers and I'm going to choose the Rich Razzlebury marker and the Early Espresso marker. And I'm going to just use the marker to stamp technique, ink up where my cotton is and where my wood is. Give it the technical little huff, <gasps> breathe on it, <laughs> and I'm going to pop my cotton on there. And if you want to, you can just have a little piece of cotton coming off the reel. And to go around that, I'm going to have some little beads. Cute. They are very sweet. Just stamp that colour off. I'll have some pink ones as well. Okay. So my next one, I'm going to do um, buttons. Where sh which order shall I do this? And I think what I'm going to do next, actually, we're going to do the bow. Now, here's a little demonstration of a fork bow. This is something we have. I've taught in class a few times, and if you want to get a perfect little bow, this is the best way. Lay your ribbon across a fork. It can be any size of fork. If you want a big one, get one of those big fish serving forks, or a garden fork if you've got some very big ribbon. And you're going to lay it across, bring it round, put it through the middle tines, feed it fork back, Bring it forward through those middle tines again and tie a knot. Now this will make a perfect little mini bow and it is so easy to do. I'm just going to trim that off. I'll probably trim that a little bit more. Let's just take that off and you can see perfect every time. I'm going to take a glue dot to stick that on. Before I stick it, I'm actually just going to stamp my little stitched pieces. I'm going to do these in Old Olive. It's like a little stitched heart. And then we'll take our bow. can go over there and I'll just trim those little bits off. Such an easy way to do a bow. If you didn't get it the first time, you've got a video so you can wind it back and go again. Do it with me. And I'm going to pick out one of the buttons to, to do some buttons. These are um, from the Brights collection, so I'm picking out the matching Razzlebury one. And I don't like naked buttons. So I'm going to just thread some twine through there, whoops, and this is the actually the linen thread I'm going to thread through there and just cut that off, cut those tails off. So I've got a little... Right, brief pause to answer the phone there. There we go, so we've got our little button and then we're going to stamp some buttons as well. And I'm going to do one in Razzlebury and one in green. There is a smaller button as well, but I'm just going to do those two today. And a smaller button stamp, I should say. There's also a smaller button real buttons. So we're going to pop that one on there. So it's a slightly different layout than I did last time, but I'm liking that. 
and then a little bit of glue to go on the back. And as I say, whoever it was that came up with this idea of doing it like a sampler, thank you very much and let me know if it was you, because I know I did see one online that made me really like the idea of doing it like that. So there's my original colouring and that's the one we've just done now. Okay, now I'm going to now show you another couple of ideas that I came up with for using this stamp set. So I really liked the paintbrush that comes in it. So that's let's paint the town. And then we've got to have this one, the crafters. So we've got both the crafting ones on here. Uh, crafters don't lie, they embellish and thanks a hole punch with a little bit of hole punching going on as well. So, and that in this in a similar kind of layout. And as I say, what great great card to do for a hair with for a hairdresser with your cutter of the rest as well. So I hope you've enjoyed your visit to Elizabeth's Craft Room today. Get in touch if you would like to um, earn this stamp set um, by being a hostess with me. And as I say, lots of different ways to do that. So you don't have to have a big party at your house unless you would like to. Thanks for visiting today and I look forward to welcoming you back again soon.